Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. There was a new ivermectin study published in the Journal of American Medical Association or JAMA on February 18th. In short, this study said ivermectin treatment during early illness did not prevent progression to severe disease, and the study does not support the use of ivermectin for patients with COVID-19. If you are a long-term viewer of this channel, you will know that I always look at this topic very objectively and I don't take a position for or against using ivermectin. But when I look at this study, I find a few issues and to be honest, I think this study has told us little to nothing and let me break it down for you. Let's first look at the demographic of the study. The study involved results from 490 patients with mild to moderate COVID-19 in Malaysia. Participants were aged 50 and above with at least one documented comorbidity. The people who did not develop symptoms or who had severe COVID-19 were not included in the trial. 249 patients received standard care, while 241 received a course of oral ivermectin over five days in addition to standard care. The study found that 21.6% of patients in the ivermectin group and 17.3% in the standard care group progressed to severe disease. Now let's first look at this outcome data table. The primary outcome of this study is to determine the effectiveness of IVM in preventing progression to severe disease among high-risk patients with COVID-19. Now, Their findings showed the IVM group had nine more patients progressed to severe disease than the control group, and that correspond to the 21.6% and the 17.3%. But at the same time, the p-value is 0 0.25, which is nowhere near statistically significant of p-value less than 0 0.05. Now, in fact, all of the outcomes measured in this study had no statistically significant differences. Interestingly, even more IVM group patients developed severe disease. There were statistically insignificant more patients in the control group who had had mechanical ventilation and were admitted to ICU and deaths. So basically, there is an opposite trend between the primary outcome and some of the secondary outcomes. But the bottom line is that nothing in this study is statistically significant, so these results have very little value. Now, the study had 490 patients, and if the sample size were to be bigger, I wonder if there would be any statistically significant differences. Second, the study enrolls patients within the first seven days of illness. Now, in comparison, the Oxford principal trial allows patients who experience symptoms for up to 14 days to join the trial. The question becomes if ivermectin worked to inhibit viral replication or work in some other mechanisms. Now, if it were used to inhibit viral replications, then 7 to 14 days of symptom onset would not be very helpful. Both COVID antiviral pills from Pfizer and Merck have to be taken within 3 to 5 days of symptom onset. Would there be any differences if IVM were taken earlier in the course of the infection? And I know a lot of my viewers are very knowledgeable on this topic, and you may be screaming right now saying, hey, this study didn't give the patient zinc. Well, zinc is another debatable supplement in the context of COVID. We have a randomized trial that shows zinc does nothing, but at the same time, we also have a case control study that says Singh works well. Now, if researchers included two debatable agents in one study, then the study would have to be designed very carefully to separate four treatment groups to tell which agent was producing the therapeutic effect. This design is certainly possible. 
The bottom line is that the scientific community tend to look at this problem very black and white, but unfortunately, there is canceling culture happening in this area, and I don't know if that is the right way to do science these days. So that is all for this quick update. And again, this video is for educational purposes only. And I hope you have learned something from this video. And that is all. Please take care. Bye.